Our next talk is Continuous, Past, Present, and Future by Emanuele Bassi. Great. You have the floor. Thank you very much, Rick. So, welcome. Hello, everyone, and welcome to WADEC, uh, second day. If, uh, yeah, you may not know me. Hello, my name is Emanuele Bassi. You might remember me from such presentations as all of my clutter state of the unions, uh, an history of how GTK draws, and the GTK scene graph that will be ready next year, I promise. <laughs> so this time, though, I'm not here to talk about graphic stack and stuff like that. I'm here to talk about um, building node and what is continuous. So a bit of history. Um, continuous started off as a spin-off of the GNOME OS idea. Um, from John McCann uh, years ago now, at the uh, Den Haag uh, Guadec. Um, Continuous was a way to generate an open uh, operating system image that the GNOME design team um, could download, install, and run in order to test the changes that landed in Git. Uh, before Continuous appeared, the design team had to deal with uh, JH build. Yes. Uh, JHPL was never really reliable for day-to-day -day development of the whole of GNOME. It's fine for like components, but not really for that. Uh, so Colin Walters, his disembodied Ed, uh, is there just to mock uh, GMAC. Um, Colin created Continues uh, using his project, then new project uh, called OS3, uh, in order to make it easy to uh, install, upgrade, and uh, generally speaking, uh, using an operating, sy operating system in a VM without having to download a VM every single time or building everything with uh, GHBuild. Um, it also, uh, thanks to the power of OS3, uh, allows you to uh, go back and forth between versions of the uh, file system, the OS file system. Um, thus, it would make uh, QA easier. So, um, I'm gonna talk about GNOME Continuous. It's better to start with that definition. Um, we're going to go through most of this definition so that at the end of the talk, we will be pretty much on the same page. So GNOME Continuous is a continuous integration and delivery platform that builds a well-defined set of components that we call GNOME and deploys the result into an OS3 repository. But what is continuous integration? So uh, thanks to the power of Wikipedia, um, we have a somewhat shared definition of what CI means. Uh, CI is continuous integration. Um, you build everything against a known base with a known set of tools and check that not only a commit or a branch or a tag um, go through the build step without issues, but also that the test suite can run and works. Uh, you can run continuous integration for each module inside a complex project, like GNOME, uh, assuming you have a shared base environment that you control and you know, and you don't need to const constantly rebuild the base uh, in order to keep stuff working. Um, CI is basically what tells you that the commit you push, the branch you just merged, uh, just broke your project. What is continuous delivery then? So again, thanks to Power Wikipedia. Um, continuous delivery is a software engineering approach in which teams produce software in short cycles, ensuring that software can be reliable released at runtime, at any time, sorry. Um, in more prosaic terms, it's a way to take all the resources that make a project, deploy them to a staging location, and run the tests. If you manage to do this quickly and uh, quickly enough and time and time enough, um, and if you automate this, uh, then what you call a release is just the promotion of a commit or a tag to, from the staging location to the production one. Uh, similarly to how you build a, a tarball out of a tag. Um, this has the additional benefit that it removes the need for doing hot fixes in production. Uh, you just fix the mainline, run the test, if everything passes, promote. 
uh, continuous delivery as opposed to continuous integration is what tells you that the commit some project push or the branch some project merge broke everything else. So a continuous integration delivery pipeline is something that combines CI and CD into a single shared pipeline. And it what enables you to build and test complex projects like GNOME. Um, we cannot really build each model in g module in the GNOME module set as a separate independent entity. Each module has dependencies and that are provided by GNOME and they are the dependencies that other projects in GNOME uh, depend on. So we need CI to build every single project in GNOME and check that every single commit builds, but also we need CD to ensure that every single project as a whole, every single module, uh, so every uh, GNOME as a whole, builds in a well-known sequence and doesn't break in the middle. Um, additionally, the test for each module should run not as part of your build, but inside a well-defined environment. Uh, as they can interact with system services or uh, session services um, or have access to ancillary ut utilities. So in order to do that, normally you would create a mock service and you had, you'd have to do that for every single uh, service you use. Uh, some projects do that, like uh, GNOME Settings Siemen uh, or uh, GNOME Control Center have a mock um, set of uh, hardware services so that can test uh, the changes uh, and the, um, their changes against the fake hardware. Um, the proper way to run these kind of things is actually to have an environment that is close enough to the real one uh, because it is a real one. It's not probably a real physical, physical machine, it's a VM, but it is a real, it, real live operating system. So we kind of define what CI and CD is, but probably want to do, who is this for? Um, generally, it's for this major four set of people. Uh, they kind of all combined into QA, but it's like split. Uh, the maintainers use um, CI and CD to verify that the projects build in various configurations. This, in this is key. And that releases or commits do not prevent the rest of GNOME from building and running. Um, contributors use uh, CI and CD to check that uh, what they're working on, a specific feature branch, for instance, doesn't break everything else. Um, the downstream packagers, um, from the Linux um, distribu the distribution community, but also for, thi oh, I'm sorry, uh, things like um, uh, macOS, uh, Ombru, or whatever else, the, the MSYS, for instance, for, for Windows, um, have a known working baseline, and they can test their own patches on top of that. Uh, same for OS vendors. Uh, OS vendors not only have that particular thing, but also want a minimum viable product so they can take GNOME and know what exactly what works and then create a product on that. Um, application developers uh, can use the, the result of the CI and CD pipeline to test uh, their application against the latest version of GNOME. Uh, to check the state of the APIs or to check a new feature provided by the, by the system. So they have the application ready for when the next version of um, GNOME is out. And QA can use CI and CD to have access to the latest build of the entire project and verify that it's working as intended. But what does it all mean? So insofar as saying that GNOME is a collection of projects, uh, each made of code, uh, documentation, data, tests, and that all projects inside GNOME interact with each other in order to create an operating system as well as desktop environment, 
and that the operating system and desktop environment provide an agreed upon API for application developers to run their applications, then continues is GNOME. It's very simple. So, hello. I'll be your Bill Sheriff for today and forever. So, who is a Bill Sheriff, just to clarify? Um, uh, this is picture here in my natural habitat. Um, so a bill sheriff is uh, an individual or more likely a group of individuals uh, con constantly monitoring the um, build pipeline, looking for broken builds or broken tests. Um, why not both? Uh, their role is to keep the build green uh, or basically um, to keep the code in our repositories in a good state to the extent that the state is reflected by the fact that the entire thing builds. Uh, we are not ogres. Um, we are not waiting for a build fail to uh, chastise the poor committer who didn't have any idea that commit the push to gnome.org or any other related repository could break the build for everybody else. Of course, we're not. Uh, it, I mean, testing the build is what CI is for, CI and CD. I mean, if it didn't break, it would be pointless then. Um, when a sheriff sees the build, uh, uh, a build breaking, uh, they should be empowered to take one or more several steps, uh, including uh, tagging a repository um, to not build whatever happens next after a break uh, until the build is fixed. Um, to revert the commit if the commit is broken, clearly, uh, or to push a fix on top of that. Um, the build sheriff is probably the person that will tell you that the latest commit in a dependency anywhere broke uh, a module or a dependency um, or a deprecation that was added by a low level um, uh, level, low level component uh, has produced a warning in your code and requires to be fixed. Uh, or that uh, a new version of a compiler, because those happen, um, enable a new warning and you get now a broken build. And all of this happens on a neutral base with complete logs and a very well known configuration. So you know where to look and possibly what to fix. So a build sheriff has an important role in any complex project using a uh, continuous integration delivery pipeline. They are not gatekeepers, but they are the ultimate arbiters on what should stay in the gate repository, in the code repository. Um, what we do as a free and open source software project does not imply that we dump the code in the lap on, of anybody who can download it from the internet. Uh, we provide the people that check out our code and use our code with a working set of interoperating components. And these components must always build. Uh, and at the very least result in something that can run. At least. Um, pushing randomly broken things to master branch is really not acceptable in any uh, scenario. This is what topic branches are for. So I've been in the <laughs> not really envi enviable position uh, for the past two years to working as the unofficial build sheriff for GNOME. All the responsibility with none of the power. And aside from badly quoting comic book characters, uh, I learned that uh, acting, uh, what I wanted to learn of, uh, as a build sheriff, after looking at what the Mozilla build sheriff, sheriffs do uh, every day of the week, um, is I wanted to learn about software development and engineering best practices. I wanted to learn about quality assurance, testing, integration, delivery. Um, of course, I learned something very different. <sighs> it taught me that nobody ever compiles their own code. Um, Every single maintainer who offers a build-time configuration choice does not test them after they get merged. 
And most definitely, that the most common process to write free software amounts to, does it build on my laptop with a dirty build tree? If it does, ship it. <laughs> As it turns out, I hate software developers. <laughs> Which means that self-hatred is involved. I'm an equal opportunity hater. Moss Eisley, or the stereotypical free and open source software project. So this is the Gordon Gecko moment of the talk. Um, this is what will be plastered on Phronix and LWN. So software is, so there's a lie in the software community. Software is a rational effort. Software is far from a rational effort. It is a profoundly based on emotions. Um, Positive emotions are a great thing, and we all strive to have something excellent and exciting for everyone else to see, to use, and contribute towards, especially uh, for free software. As a matter of fact, though, I find disappointment a powerful motivator to get stuff done when it comes to fixing broken behavior. I deeply enjoy the moment when something goes from not working to working, and that includes every step of the way from broken design to broken platform architecture, to broken implementation, to broken testing, to broken integration. Um, this motivation is part of why I contribute to GNOME. There are very, very few free and open source projects that actively encourage contributors to own up broken uh, components, uh, broken architecture, and broken design. Being a GNOME contributor means that taking responsibility for something broken and fixing it at the best of your abilities and then contribute it back to the larger community. It's the campsite rule, leave the project in a better state than when you found it. Of course, I realize that this may be my thing and so your mileage may vary. And it turns out that working in free software has left me with no shortage whatsoever of broken things I can complain about on social media and on IRC and possibly fix if I have push access to the Git repository. Uh, for any given day, in truth, there are more broken things that I've working once. Um, yeah, free software is full of poorly thought out components that barely work in isolation, let alone together, and it's entirely up to us to fix them all. <sighs> about broken things, let's talk about building GNOME. So, building GNOME is not trivial. Um, GNOME requires a core set of functionality provided by the underlying kernel and basic user space uh, in order to even build, let alone run. On top of that, GNOME is composed by many, many, many components, uh, often, inter uh, often interoperating at the API level, ABI level, introspection ABI level, uh, plugin ABI level, uh, IPC a uh, ABI level, um, in the past few months, like two, three months while I was working on this talk, uh, we had a couple of cases where the continuous pipeline helped us track down a couple of changes across the board, um, both originating with, within a module and across various components. So, case study number one. Um, Glib provides a few tools that deal with code generation uh, for some of the boilerplate that is needed to write the object. Um, these tools are widely used in GNOME to um, build other projects and have existed since the early days of Glib, um, back when Glib was new and the world full of possibilities and wide-eyed idealists writing a desktop environment from first principles. Uh, this means that a lot of the build infrastructure and code relying on them is old and generally poorly understood. Um, largely cargo culted uh, all across the history of a project. Um, because before Stack Overflow, we just randomly ran through CVS and copied like code. Um, um, any change made on one of these tools provided by Glib has the potential for a basically breaking the build for everyone else. Um, of course, you have to understand this. Uh, none of the behaviors 
of these tools is documented, specified, tested, and basically most of the time it's sh dumb sheer luck that it even works. So the only way to actually verify that something didn't break, so a commit didn't break the build is literally to build the entire plumon after building glib. This cannot be achieved on the glib's maintainer laptop. Uh, for reasons of time, combinatorial explosion of dependencies, complexity of the build metrics, you name it. Um, this is where uh, a continuous integration delivery pipeline shines because this is what it's meant to be used for. Um, the second case study, again, a few months, um, Mizun. I strongly recommend everyone to switch to Mizun, that, uh, everyone that's using C, C++, whatever, to build their project switch to Mizen now, uh, especially if you're an application developer. It's easy and it's amazing. But libraries have a set of requirements that, yeah, set of requirements that are kind of more of a thing. Um, so whenever you switch a build system, you have uh, an effect on probably the amount of, of things you were cargo culting before. So the end result is that the shared library does not export the correct symbols or the versioning is completely incorrect. And in order to catch that, it, you have to build the things that depend on your project. Again, this is what continuous delivery and integration is for. So as a community, we kind of consciously end up splitting off components instead of centralizing functionality. We prefer delegation and composition uh, as opposed to pining API inside single point of failure. Uh, we like small components because we value the design philo philosophy that allows us to provide choice to our users and the ability to, co to compose an OS tailored to their needs via a loosely set of connected interfaces. This is, of course, a complete and total lie. <laughs> We like small components because it makes it easier for each maintainer to keep stuff in their head uh, without going mad. Uh, it makes it easier to insulate against or root around a, uh, a maintainer with strong opinions that we don't agree with. And we can drop dependencies when they be inevitably become unmaintained. Uh, or we want to avoid thinking about a niche of our platform. Uh, choice is mostly a side effect, uh, generally unintended, and definitely not welcome of this process. So no, Linux is not about choice. Uh, every complex system that worked invariably evolved from a simple system that worked. A complex system designed from scratch never works and cannot be made to work. This is a goal law. Additionally, the more complex you make a system, the more unlikely you make it work in all its configurations. Only a small subset of interactions can be built, tested, and verified as working. If you're not testing a configuration, you must assume it's broken. <laughs> and shipping broken stuff is bad for users because they will file bugs and you will have to work on fixing the bugs instead of fix making like, new features which are cool and shipping broken stuff is bad for maintainers because they will file bugs <laughs> or they will have to just deal with this uh, broken stuff from dependencies down the line. And it's bad from down, uh, uh, downstream packages and OSVs because they will be placed in the position of not being able to build and ship the broken code you just, uh, just delivered to them. And while you can trick people with it works for me for a while, you cannot do forever. So, well, of course, I'm gonna add some unit tests and it's gonna be fine. Two unit tests, no integration tests. <laughs> integration testing is a little bit more complicated than this, but it is pretty much this. It's a spectrum though. You can do integration tests on your own single project. Um, you can, if your project is made of two libraries or library and application, you can just treat them, treat the integration as uh, your library, even if it's private, you can treat it as a hostile 
uh, dependency and code defensively against it because you're your worst enemy. Um, so don't ship broken stuff. My cat will be very angry with you. <laughs> so to sum up, if your project does not build unless it's your laptop, if your project does not build unless it's packaged for your Linux distribution, I'm, you know who I'm talking about. If you don't know if a change, if you don't know if a change you committed will break someone else's code outside of what is tested by your test suite, if you don't have a test suite running every time you commit something, then you are shipping broken software. Stop doing that. This is what continuous integration delivery is. And. Since building GNOME is really building a lot of projects in well-defined sequence and making sure everything comes, up, comes out right at the end, this is what GNOME continues is. Um, we have to automate, we have had to automate this uh, in order to avoid using humans over the internet as our continuous integration and delivery pipeline. It's bad. Uh, we also have to do this for FlatHub and Flatpak and the GNOME SDK. So we've been doing this for a long time since 2012 now. So this is what happens every day of, of, the day of the week, seven days a week, 365 days a year. It's not always obvious. It's obvious only if something breaks because you will notice me descending like a hammer. And we're still far away from actually doing this right. So the current state of the art for CI pipelines and CD pipelines is like these three services, Travis for Linux uh, and uh, uh, Mac OS, whenever Mac OS works. Uh, Upveyor is for Windows. GitLab is like custom pipeline coming soon to a GNOME infrastructure near you. Um, we have our own ad hoc solution. It's called, again, GNOME Continuous. It's a big pile of JavaScript that calls into like various random scripts. Um, it kind of works like Flatpak Builder. You have a manifest, you build through the manifest, and at the end of the process, uh, everything is committed to an OS3 uh, repository, and every single build in a, is an OS3 commit, and it builds inside a sandbox environment, so no network connection. Uh, it builds um, as well with minimal capabilities uh, and uh, avoids like random access to outside of the sandbox. And at the end of the process, it generates a VM so that you can actually test, boot and test this thing and run the tests inside the just built uh, environment. It has a ton of problems. Uh, the code base is like five years old. It's not what I call like easily accessible. Uh, the JSON manifest is kind of like flimsy. Uh, it cannot use the Flatpak Builder manifest because it's uh, it's very different uh, in terms of like what it does at the end. Uh, every time the we clone from Git, it's heavily dependent on Git. So every time we clone from Git, uh, sometimes the Git daemon just gets stuck and you have to kick the server manually. Um, there is no actual notification to the committer uh, that something broke. Uh, there's no reverse dependencies, so if we change glib, it will build glib, but it will not build everything that depends on glib. That's one thing. And it's very, very much attached to the build API um, that Colin uh, drafted, which is basically heavily based on auto tools, so configure, make, make, install. Uh, since we're all switching to Mizen, we're all switching to Mizen. <laughs> since we're all switching to Mizen, that makes it really hard uh, to, like, you have to patch every single component to conform to this, this build API. But uh, we can do stuff to make it better. Um, whoop. Yay. Oh, okay. This is interesting. <laughs> well, yeah, we're, we're yeah, okay. Uh, we're gonna make stuff better um, by probably adding new uh, 
build systems like uh, using BuildBot, reusing BuildBot. Uh, there is some work to be done in BuildStream as a base, but in general, we are gonna try and make it more reliable for everyone. And we need to uh, ensure that every single GNOME maintainer and contributor follows the mindset that it's your responsibility to keep GNOME building and working and the world does not stop at your laptop or your project or your favorite Linux distribution. Um, it is outreach, really. So in the end, we are in this together and to create a strong and stable environment for our users. Yes, strong and stable. <laughs> our goal is not to build GNOME. Our goal is to empower our users to achieve what they want to achieve with as much support from the hardware platform as possible, with as much security and privacy we can offer, and with as much flexibility we can reliably support. So I'd like to thank my employer and the basically just letting me come here and talk to you guys. And thank you. Yes, uh, the continuous pipeline at the end creates a VM, um, boots it up, goes through the, uh, the session login uh, as a bunch of like custom things, uh, custom messages inside the uh, session, um, the GNOME session like initializer, uh, and uses systemd to um, pick it up and see if we reached a certain point. And then we also take snapshots of the session by uh, launching uh, applications or the first boot experience mm -hmm. and then saves them all. And, and do you also do fix No, no, yes. It's one of the things that we have to fix. I know OpenQA, yes. <laughs> <laughs> So um, the, flat back, the, the continuous manifest file predates, uh, uh, predates Flatback by about three years, probably. Um, I don't have any specific plan. The Flatback Builder like, manifest file covers most of what GNOME Builder does, but GNOME Builder has additional requirements, like setting up the environment to build the entire, um, the entire thing from scratch. Uh, it depends on not a runtime, but a Yocto base like Flatback, uh, the, uh, flat, uh, the free desktop SDKs do. Um, there are a bunch of like subtle incompatibilities. Uh, I want to make sure that the Flatback manifest is actually closer, the, the Flatback, sorry, the continuous manifest is actually closer to the Flatback manifest, but they are not the same, and I don't think they can be made the same. Okay. Unless, I break the flat pad builder manifest, <laughs> which I don't want to. Thank you. Okay, this is the last question. Okay. Hello, thanks for your talk. And Thank you. I'd like to make a confession. I've been punished by you before in the past. <laughs> <laughs> you recognize so this as a face of terror. <laughs> yes. yes. I, re I recall the feelings of fear. So it makes me not want to have them again, which is related to my question. So um, am I right in thinking that Continuous only tests the master branch? Yeah after you've pushed to it. So I'm wondering if you have ever thought about making it possible for people to test their own staging branches. So uh, yes. thinking that this is possibly going to be much more valuable even when you get reverse dependency testing. But uh, let's say you're changing the glib tools. You would yep. you would ideally, you would like to test, know that they're not going to break the build for everybody else before you push them to master. Yep. I'm wondering if you've thought about doing that, if there are any plans. 
in the so pipeline. So uh, there is a lot of overlap there between a tri server, which is what the Mozilla infrastructure uses. Uh, but a tri server is great if you only have a single project, uh, which Firefox is, uh, and GNOME <laughs> definitely isn't. Um, so one of the things that um, one of the problems is the infrastructure to build GNOME is pretty beefy. You need like a very a physical machine that is fairly like well endowed. Yes, um, and otherwise it, you, it will take ages for you to to finish the test. Um, the it will be possible to have a separate manifest that basically you can tell uh, the build bot to just build all the components plus this, and then notify you. But yes, we need notification that something broke, we need regress, uh, reverse dependencies, and we actually need a way to uh, share the load between master and other branches. Uh, uh, something that would go a long way towards a better uh, environment would be to even start testing the stable branches um, instead of just basically assuming that they work which is another phrasing. I guess we are out? Yes, uh, it's, um, it's now lunchtime, so go Thanks for it everyone. and consume. <laughs>